when I was a child, I grew up in rural Mississippi. And I was able to go outside and play without worrying or my parents worrying about pedophiles and other danger. We were basically in the middle of nowhere. I could go outside to the lake and fish. I could watch the rabbits and raccoons and possums and squirrels and ducks and geese. And we had animals. We were raising animals on our <clears throat> little farm, I guess you could say. I don't know exactly how to describe it. My people were sharecroppers and we had uh, pigs and chickens and whatnot. We grew a lot of the food that we consumed and my grandmother did a lot of canning and they sold and felt real self-sufficient. I was a child. I just know that I enjoyed it and I enjoyed being around nature and so much animal life. And my mother would watch for hours uh, Mutual of Omaha, Wild's Kingdom, and we would watch the elephants and tigers and aardvarks and become a lover of nature, a lover of animals. And so we would also have our pets, cats and, and dogs like many of us do, and we love our animal friends. So we moved from the rural area to a semi-rural area and there was a lot of stray dogs running around. I, I remember walking down the street and there was a big black dog and I figured the dog was hungry and so I didn't know whether this dog was going to be friendly or, or mean. So I greeted the dog. Come here. Come here. Come here. How you doing there, buddy? Come here. Come here. And the dog wagged his tail. That's a sign that the dog is friendly. And the dog came to me. I pet the dog and played with the dog. And the dog followed me home. I fed the dog and I watered the dog and I, I continued to play with this stray dog. <clears throat> so I thought, and it seemed, remember now, so I thought, so it seemed as though I was going to have a good relationship with this stray dog. Okay. So I remember I had some uh, leftovers, some bones and other scraps from the table and fed the dog and we started to play. And it began to get a little rough. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, starting to get a little bit too rough. This dog that I just gave water to this dog that I have been feeding, I'm beginning to realize this dog is trying to hurt me. This dog is trying to bite me. Now, I don't know what I did to set this animal off, but this dog really trying to hurt me. So I balled up my fist and hit the dog in the jaw and kicked that dog and got him away from me. And the dog went on down the street. I never did see this dog again. I'm saying this to remind me of this sister, Sister Nandy. She was good. And I can bear witness that Sister Nandy was very good to Sister Noble. 
She did not ask. She did not research. The only thing that Sister Nandy knew was that her friend, somebody that came into her trust, was under attack. This is my friend, and I am going to stand up, and I'm going to fight with those who want to fight with my friend. It is an honorable thing to do, but sometimes, in a lot of cases, it may not be very wise because we can get ourselves caught up in things that might look a certain way, like a friendly dog, and it turns out to be something different. So, we're looking at the current happenings and Sister Noble because of her accusatory behavior because she's not really telling things the way they are. She does not like being questioned. And there are things happening behind the scenes unbeknownst to Angel Snub No. 7. I have nothing to do with it, but of course, <laughs> I will get blamed for everything. I'm, I'm not privy to private conversations. I'm not privy to uh, behaviors behind the scenes. But what has happened is that she has turned around and stabbed Sister Nandy in the back. She's become like a rabid dog. And she becomes vicious and nasty for no real reason because Sister Nandy defended her, not only against me, but anybody because that's my friend. Sister Nandy was like myself that I was feeding this dog. And for no real reason, this dog, I was nice to this dog. Sister Nanny was nice. I was nice to this woman. But when she can't get her way, for some reason, she turns into this rabid, vicious animal. She forgets everything, just like this dog. I fed this dog. I know this dog was hungry. I know this dog was thirsty. I fed this dog. I gave this dog. But this dog did not give a damn about what I'd done. Something caused this dog, I don't know what it is, to turn on me, to try to hurt me. And that what has happened. Sister Noble, do not give a damn about what you've done for her. She's a selfish person. The only thing she knows is what is in the best interest of her. And we really don't know what that is. She does not care that Sister Nandy put herself out for you. We don't have to be redundant because we know the story. I was good to this woman for years. She don't give a damn about those things. It's about my feelings, my hurt, my pain. It's all about her. See, this is what happens with selfish behavior. I really dodged a bullet. I did. I dodged a, I did a, I dodged a, a real bullet. Can you imagine if we were legally married? This woman has exposed herself. The way she is, there's no doubt in my mind. She's the type of person, because she can't get her way, she will scream rape. There's no doubt about it. We, we see that. She will scream rape. Anything. She's willing to do anything. There's no reason for her to flag my channels. There's no reason for her to flag 
Sister Nandy's channel. But she's so evil. And I think that her nastiness is magnified because of her association with somebody else who has the same type of attitude. Nasty type of attitude. Of course, I got a picture. Let me bring that picture up. When you have a combination of this, oh, wow. We say the demons of darkness. They have no scruples. They have no honor. They have no integrity. There's no boundaries. Their parents, Sister Noble's mother died from cancer. And Aaliyah's father died from cancer. And they would come out into the public and make mockery of myself or anybody because they don't like them or they have a problem with them. Somebody else who they believe is sick. No scruples. Even criminals, there are certain gangs and there are certain things that even criminals won't do. But these people here, because of their feelings, because so vindictive and nasty and wicked, heartless. And then you call them and tell them, you're gold diggers. Well, if you're not gold diggers, what did you do? What did you bring to the table? They didn't bring, they don't bring nothing. What benefit did Sister Noble bring to Sister Nandy for Sister Nandy to go out on the limb for her? She didn't bring nothing to Sister Nandy. Didn't do nothing. What did Aaliyah do for Angel Snub Nub 7? She didn't do anything. They just took and they take. And when they can't take, when they can't use, when they can't manipulate, then they seek to destroy and punish because the ones speak out about their abuse, about their manipulation. Sister Nandy didn't do anything. She just asked questions and she just began to see that something here does not sound right. And there was certain behaviors behind the scenes, certain names started getting thrown up, certain names people was trying to put into the mix. Oh, you bring in drama. Two drama queens. Protect the black woman. We're supposed to protect the black woman, but not when you're wrong. Not when you're out here causing trouble. And problems, unnecessary problems. You don't want to hold yourself accountable for what you do. Everything, somebody's always hurting you. You don't do nothing to nobody. They don't want to hold themselves accountable. I ask them simply, would you take a lie detector? Oh, no. We, why? Because we're trying to hide something. Because we know that we're not going to pass the lie detector test. But then again, that's how it is when you're dealing with people who have no honor, no integrity. It's all about them. Self-righteous behavior, vindictive. Myself and Sister Nandy turned on by Noble she acts like a vicious rabid dog and does it with no conscience. Wow. No conscience at all. 